This is lesson number three in uh, the Laughing Frog Pottery School. Um, today what we're doing is looking at what I consider to be secondary centering, centering a ring of clay. Um, towards the end of this video I will demonstrate um, a process where I put a coil of clay around a textured base and throw a plate that, so it's retaining the texture that's on that plate, um, sort of like a slab of clay, with a textured slab of clay with a, um, a thrown ring on it, using this secondary centering process. So the, the other thing that I find really fantastic about this process is that I incorporate it into, into essentially into everything that I th throw as a the process. It means that the initial opening, the centering process doesn't have to be as accurate because once the slab, the, the ball of clay is opened up, um, I'm re-centering it at that stage. But then the same position that my hands are in once I've opened this clay up and re-centered it, um, become the start of the lifting process for throwing a cylinder or a bowl. So what I've got there is essentially a donut of clay around the wheel head. It's pretty much on centre. So to make it less on centre, I'll just cut a, disc, a slice out of it. So. By definition, that's now off center because there's an uneven distribution of clay around the center of the wheel head. So if I just threw that as it is, one side would come up higher, the other side would be lower. So I need to recenter that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my thumb almost horizontally down against the wheel head. That means my wrist is relatively low. My index finger comes onto the inside. So what I feel keep saying is necessary to, to centre clay is to provide a profile around that clay uh, that means that the easiest place for that clay to be is on centre. So what I need to do is to have a profile, my thumbs providing a, that profile at the bottom, my index fingers providing that profile on the inside low down against the, the, the base of the pot. So I need to have uh, a profile provided over that section there. On a larger piece of clay, I can perhaps just bring my hand like that and uh, create that profile. But on something small like this, my hand's too big. So what I do is stretch a piece of sponge over that section and trap it between my hands. So essentially my fingers are going to be in that kind of a position. I start off with my, my two fingers straight like that and bend the, the second finger there at the first knuckle. And my index finger is essentially horizontal and the side of my second finger is, is um, correcting, uh, putting a profile around the vertical surface. But I need the sponge in that section there. So that put the sponge on, then put my hand on like that and then hang on to the sponge at the back, otherwise um, I'll just lose the sponge. So with that in the position, I can recenter this piece of clay by providing a downward pressure inwards with my, an inwards and downwards pressure with my right hand with that sponge. So you can see how that's brought that, that um, ring of clay back on center and removed the, the scoop I'd taken out of it. Now, because my thumb's in that position, I can push upwards and inwards with that uh, thumb, and I will be getting the first two, or what would take me two or three lifts in a normal lifting process, I can do in just one push. So normally I do that with the sponge in this position, my index finger on the inside, because that gives me extra control, and it means that I can if it starts getting dry, I can squeeze the sponge lightly. And it also means that um, the, the rim is controlled a little bit by the sponge.
but just for this uh, video I'm just going to start pushing upwards with my thumb and show you how that thumb is just lifting the clay up because I'm doing it this way it's going a little bit wonky and the inside hasn't gone as smoothly as it would because my index finger wasn't there controlling that so we'll go back downwards and I'll do that process of lifting again with the, the sponge and my finger on the inside as well. And you can see how the clay just moves upwards really nicely and it gets that initial lifting done. So the, the thing that's going on here is that we, we're working with this, essentially the same centering process Sort of this secondary centering process, and I'll just go through that again. So I'm going to cut that a scoop out of it again to make sure that it's off center. And then my thumb of my left hand, and in most Western countries the wheels go anti-clockwise, so it's the left hand, it has to be the left hand that's on the outside, and the index finger of my left hand coming down against the bottom, uh, the base of the, the pot on the inside. With my right hand, I'm stretching the clay between uh, those uh, two fingers, stretching the sponge I sh should say, between those two fingers, holding on to it with my thumb at the back and pushing downwards. So you'll notice that my index finger is almost horizontal, it's not going down on the inside of the form and my uh, second uh, finger, the side of my second finger is controlling the vertical surface. Then I can just push upwards with my thumb. So that's the thumb of my left hand, push upwards with that and start throwing the cylinder. So after this, I'm just going to throw that plate that I was talking about uh, with a throw on the rim. In order to show the usage that you can put this technique of, of centering a ring of clay, a coil of clay, um, I'm going to, uh, what the, that you can put that to, I'm going to um, throw a flat and textured um, slab of clay um, and stretch it and then put a thrown ring on it to make it into a platter. So I'm starting off just centering this lump of clay. And then to, to make it um, into like a flat slab of clay, I just push downwards with the, the hypothenar of my right hand, pushing it down like that. So my hand's quite flat and I'm stretching that clay out. I'm, in this case, I'm making quite a thick slab of clay on the wheel, a, a, a thick sort of disc of clay. And then I'm just going to run my thumb up that just to 
distort the surface a bit. So I'll put a bit of a spiral into it and I'll cut that off. I should just get rid of a bit of moisture under this rim. So what I'm then going to do is to stretch this slab of clay, this disc of clay, so that I've got a, an oval sort of form made for it. And what that does is stretches out the, the spiral that I've made into it and sort of softens it, makes it uh, into more of an ellipse, so you get a, a, a sort of a more textured, but uh, it reveals that the grain in the clay a little bit and it gives you a sort of a really nice sort of textured um, finish there. So then what I'm going to do is to remount this onto, onto a bat um, and cut it so that it's circular. I'm a bit old school when it comes to attaching bats so I normally just use a, a pad of clay. it down like I'm throwing a dinner plate. And what I'm conscious of is that it's slightly shallower in the middle than at the edge. So that the, the edge is the highest part of the, the This is just a chipboard bat and they stick very well to the damp clay on the, um, on the wheel head. So now I'm going to bring back my slab of clay. I'll put it a bit off centre. So what I'm now going to do is just to mark a, a circle. In that, that was a bit more off centre than I planned, but cut that. So that I've now got a disc with that texture in the in the bottom, and. I'll dry that up a little bit and then I'll put a coil on it and throw it. So I'll have that textured base. So now I've got this um, disc dried up a bit. I used an electric heat gun to just to dry it a bit. And I'm just going to put a marker around here just to give me a, a guideline. And then I'm going to score where I I'm going to put a coil of clay. And slightly dampen that. So now I've got a coil of clay which I'm going to put around that edge.
where it's joining, I normally cut it at a slant so that it gives a, a bigger area for, for the join between the two coils, between the two ends of the coil. And just bring that together. If I can, I want to preserve this line down the bottom that you can see there um, so that it looks like a separate piece of clay. I think it makes more sense uh, with the textured base if it, if it has that preserved. So we'll see how we go because sometimes I lose it whilst I'm trying to centre this. So for this sort of secondary centering process what I need to do is to have my thumb down against the wheel head as I did as I demonstrated earlier my thumb down against the wheel head and I'm going to stretch this sponge across that rim and apply a downward pressure with a bit of luck we can draw that back on center pretty much on centre now. So now I'll just draw the, the flange up. I've got an air bubble in there. I think that's in where I joined the two sections, the two ends of the coil. So you can see how using that textured, um, the textured slab and the throw-on rim, the recentered and uh, throw-on rim, I've managed to make a, a, court, a plate with a texture. I'm not kind of happy with this bit around here on this one, but I'll see what I can do with that. Maybe. So it's a really useful technique for adding a, a, cl a clay, making a big platter um, and, and preserving a textured surface uh, onto a finished um, platter with a thrown rim. So thank you.